Yes, how are you? I just wanted to show you my quilts cage. Uh, for those that are researching about uh, what to put inside the cages and how to build a cage. In this case, my husband built a cage and it's made from timber and chicken wire. So as you see, it has an open space, but also has an enclosure space with some boards because uh, they like uh, to hide and be in the dark as well sometimes. Uh, also, we have some um, roofing with plastic uh, tiles. And then my husband has some on the top, some things on the top, and also have access to food very close to the cage because I am lazy to walk with the food around. So I just open it and then get some and fill the, the food feeder. Okay. Sorry about my English, guys. I'm trying to be as clear as possible. So let's go inside the cage. So I introduce you my babies. Um, at the moment, we already hatched naturally seven babies and they are already grown up as teenagers. So you will see a uh, little, like uh, uh, some quails that are uh, smaller than the other ones. And we are expecting for more at the moment. So, so you see, they are very happy in this environment, which is, uh, we are very proud because they are able to hatch some babies inside. So the first thing is um, uh, the water. As you see, is we have pebbles in the water. So especially for the babies when they were young, for them not to drown on the water. And also we have, you see that we have a container here. This container, this green container, is moringa powder with water. So I also have access to the moringa powder. And what I do is I change it like every couple of days. I, mix, uh, I use only rainwater. So mix the rainwater and change it. Uh, put a little bit of uh, powder in the water and then uh, stir it. Also I have a little bit of vinegar. Uh, vinegar is good for, for the immune system. So I put a little bit of vinegar in both waters. Um, I also try to put some green, so you see a um, pot plant with cat grass. Uh, I, I also have cats, so it, it works also for the cats and the dogs. I actually don't like the cat grass as well. And when the plant is a little bit sad, I have another pot uh, and I rotate the pots um, eventually, like maybe every two days, so the, the plant doesn't get too sad. I also have a lettuce. And what I do, I show you, is I buy a lettuce in the market. It's very cheap. Sometimes you can find it for free or super cheap when they are old, like a little bit old or a little bit moldy. They still eat it. So I just cut it in two, as you see, and I flat it on the, on the ground. And that's it. I don't have to, I don't have to do anything else and they, they will eat it all. They love the lettuces. And then on the other side, I have a watermelon. They love the watermelon as well. So I'm trying every morning to put some um, rice and veggies uh, in complement with the, the dry food. And as, as you also see, part of the diet is uh, soil, compost soil. So I just grab some compost soil. Sometimes they have worms inside and everything. They love the soil. Maybe they can they get some minerals from the soil. So um, I make sure that <clears throat> the soil bucket is all, always full. At the moment, they are a little bit fighting because I think the teenager squirrels, are some, some of them are males. So when they grow up as a male, what we do is we, put, we will put it with the chickens. We on, only one, we'll have one male per, uh, in the cage. The other maize will, will go with the chickens. Um, another thing that we put is a sandbox, as you see. The sandbox is made with a, it's a carton box, and then what I do is I open like a little, like a little um, door, because I don't want they mix, mix up the sand with the, with the straw. 
as you see, they already mix it a little bit, but what I do is just put it out and try to keep this as clean as I can. They love the sun. Uh, they clean the, them clean themselves like that. It's like a sun bath for them. Um, I made a second floor, as you see, because they are growing in numbers. So I'm trying to extend the area of run, running area. So this is new as well. And what I use as a mulch, it, you can use grass clippings. Uh, sometimes your neighbors, for example, um, mowing the lawn and then you ask them to to have the gra glass clippings and they love the grass clippings because that's also a green green diet and in addition uh, it gets brown with the time so it gets a brown compost and then I clean the brown compost side and then that that will work for fertilizing the the soil but at the moment, uh, so what I do every morning as well, for example, is I make holes in the compost, uh, sorry, in the, in the straw. So I make holes like this. I try to move the compost around with my hands. I make a little hole like that. I make some holes around like this. I try to move the, all, all the straw around. It's a little bit wet inside and they love when it's especially when it's summer they love to, to stay in the holes i make an, another hole around as well and they just love it they love to be inside the hole and also it's, it creates like a different landscape for them so they can just just i, I guess stimulate a little bit their brain um sometimes when it's too hot i put a little bit of water in the holes as well um as you see at the back we have a uh, quail mama mama quail mama quail is uh sitting on some eggs at the moment so in this time is summer in sydney we are no um gathering eggs for eating at the moment so we have uh, chickens and ducks, so, so it's no need for us to to really have some quail eggs. So we just leave the quail eggs on the cage and then they they just hatch it naturally, which is beautiful. So we are waiting for some babies in the future, maybe very soon. Uh, the mom quail, the mommy quail gets a little bit aggressive in that time because she's trying to defend the babies that happens like the last time so um i think that's very good for the baby survival uh, on the top of the cage i have a basket uh, also full with compost and and a little bit of sand they love to be there as well i'm just trying to make it super comfy for them mm, okay so on the uh, dark box I have the dry food. I try to be uh, put it away from the straw because otherwise it mess it mess up the the food and then it doesn't come out come down. So they have all the feeder. And then when when it's too hot, I put an ice pad, and they love to stand up on the ice pad. And then that's that's the way of how they refresh themselves. Um, and then when it's winter and it's too cold, I have also like a heat lamp and I turn it on. Okay, I'm just going to close this one here. And then I open this side. In this side is just like a hole. Sometimes they put eggs there, but at the moment it's not. When they start laying eggs, I just want them to um, lie in one place. So I usually just remove the eggs in one location and just leave piling up the eggs in just one specific location sometimes when it's summer as well what i do is i get the hose and i hose i hose them so it's this part here for that reason it's very good that the dry food is no is not in this uh, open area because sometimes the, the the quails get too hot so i just hose them 
and that will refresh them. And it's just, it's nothing, not, nothing gets off uh, with the water. So I try to refresh, especially the, um, the straw, the floor. And that's it guys, if you have any questions, let me know. And I hope you enjoy and I really hope that that works for, that give you some idea about your design, uh, how to maintain the quills. The quills are very happy here, as you see. Uh, they are getting big in numbers, but as, you, as I said before, the male quills will go into the chicken area with the ducks. Uh, ducks and chickens live together in our house. Okay, guys, thank you for watching.